Hey folks, Sega Sonic fan here with the Bose, I guess, what is this, the Quiet Comfort 3. Sorry, just readjusting the lens there. And uh, there's quite a bit of information online already about these, but the teardown video I found on YouTube did not have any talking in it and was a little bit hard to follow. So I figured I'd just make a quick little, quick little dealio here, quick little dealio here, uh, describing about the repair I did and how to, how to take this thing apart. Um, there is a great iFixit guide on taking this apart, um, which I highly recommend as well. Might have even better information than this video, so feel free to check it out and support iFixit and the right to repair movement, which they support, which is very cool. Um, so, a uh, quick overview, Bose headphones. These are fancy, expensive Bluetooth headphones that are, in my opinion, a little overpriced. Bose has a lot of brand recognition, and I prefer JBL and other brands, but for some reason, people are just nuts about Bose. Their design uh, stuff, the stuff they design is okay, but they're going the route of Apple uh, these days. And by that, I mean more and more kind of a walled garden approach. Uh, their uh, wireless headphones that I had worked on previously, their wireless earbuds, for example, required a app to even function. Uh, they would not even work as Bluetooth uh, without their special app which is not the case with JBL's wireless headphones. And what you see here too is just a lot of uh, integration and sort of booby trapping, I would say, of components uh, in a way that can make them break easily when you take this apart, uh, which is something Apple does, since that's why I wanted to uh, talk about how to tear this thing down in a safe way. So first you've got two ear pieces that you can just kind of squeeze and unclip. It's not too bad there. And, uh, and then under here, you're gonna have on each side some very small uh, Phillips screws. And there's two, I believe, and there's three on this side and then two on the other side. Um, those are just, uh, I think they're self-tapping, uh, you know, kind of M1.5, M2 screws. Um, and I already put this side back together. This uh, is where your buttons and stuff are which I thought would have all the circuitry, but actually there's quite a lot of circuitry over here too. Um, there's a lot going on with this thing. And um, you've got two uh, mics here and they have like a little rubber uh, cover around them. So make sure you don't lose that. There's also a MEMS microphone over here with a cover that uh, is a pain to put back on. Um, and uh, taking this one apart isn't super necessary because the battery is really usually what you want to get to. And that is these three wires right here. It's your standard pinout of you got your positive, your negative, and your temperature sensor, which is usually 10 kilo ohms to the negative rail, depending on the battery manufacturer. Um, so you can, uh, you know, desolder those is, is pretty much the first step you want to do. Let me back up though. I'm sorry, I forgot to say. After you take out those screws, uh, this cover. Uh, should pull off. Now mine needed a little bit of help from kind of a, uh, I used this tool to just kind of get in there, and just pop it off a little bit. And once that pops off, if you want to take out the motherboard, you'll find that there is an additional screw here, here, and then a third one under here. Uh, after that, you're going to need to desolder the, uh, this wire is pretty long, so you don't, have to do that one, but there's a much shorter one, white and black wires right here. You should go ahead and desolder those. Let me go ahead and get a little more light on this. And uh, and then of course, there's a plastic clip here, so you can push this out and around the clip, which will loosen up and <coughs> give you a little more wiggle space with this board as well for you to pull it out. Um, what else can be said? Uh, I don't believe there's anything on the underside of this board. You just have a line, line input, line out jack. Um, sorry, let me line input probably. And you could just see the four wires going right here to the, the TRS uh, plug that you got. Everything's labeled, which is kind of nice. Um, so you'll actually see here, uh, you know, D plus and D minus, and all that kind of stuff. Um, presumably that's for the, uh, the USB. There's some kind of a firmware update, you know, data signals. Uh, could be wrong about that though. I haven't like reverse engineered the whole wiring in this thing. But uh, what happened with this one was it got a little bit wet and um, 
opened it up, cleaned everything out. But what I did was disconnect the battery, and I found that the battery was reading zilch, was reading nothing. And I believe what it probably did is is some sort of uh, safety shutoff uh, when things were shorted with the battery. And amazingly, it's like a resettable fuse or something. So what I was able to do was externally recharge the battery on a trickle cell charger. It saw it, it recharged it. And with things all clean now, this uh, this is working again. And the jack is in good shape. I did some cleaning in there as well. Um, what's nice too is the, uh, the circuitry for the power plug. Uh, and the little, there's a little board in here, similar to this one. It talks to you, it's so fancy. Uh, that board actually, uh, and a number of the smaller chips have like a clear epoxy coating uh, to make them more uh, liquid safe, which is very nice and very essential uh, for something like this. Stop talking to me, lady. Turn it off. Um, anyway, um, hopefully this video is helpful. I know it's not a ton of info, but just wanted to explain kind of how you take off that cover and how you get to these motherboards. This other motherboard is very similar to this one. There's actually two screws instead of three. Um, one thing to keep in mind, the motherboard on this side, there is a plug underneath it. However, it is a really large press fit plug. There were some warnings online like, oh, you'll break it if you're not careful. You're not gonna break it. Don't worry about that. Um, when you undo the two screws and you desolder the two wires in this side, go ahead and just pry it up. Something with wood or plastic, generally don't want to use metal. Uh, go slow, of course, but um, you have to have a little bit of force to pry it up to undo the plug, which is located right here on, on this board. Um, but don't worry about breaking the plug. I think that's really hard to do. Of course, when you when you when you disassemble things over here, make sure you there's a ribbon cable that's plugged on both ends. Make sure to disconnect that. Uh, it's kind of a no brainer. There's a couple screws for that as well. But um, yeah, I think if you're used to disassembling stuff and you follow the or you follow the iFixit guide, shouldn't be too complicated. And again, if your problem is it's not powering on and you got it wet, uh, dry it out for you know. Uh, a while, a couple days at least, and then uh, open it up, see if there's anything to clean, and then desolder this battery. Always desolder starting from the positive terminal, um, and, and then reapply with the negative terminal first. Uh, desolder it, check the voltage, uh, charge it externally, replace the battery if needed, and and then uh, and then you hopefully will be good to go because this actually has quite a lot of uh, sort of liquid resiliency in its design. So hey, plus one for Bose. Hope this video was helpful. This is Sega Sonic Fan, signing out. Folks, Sega Sonic Fan here, and today I wanna to show why sometimes you just need to hack things and go the extra mile because it is not worth the effort to fully diagnose and repair something that is really weird. Uh, basically, I have this Quiet Comfort 35, QC35 pair of Bose ooh la la noise canceling headphones. People are so nuts about Bose products, but these are pretty nice. I like them actually quite a bit. Somebody wanted me to repair them for them, so that's what I'm doing. Only problem is, after I got the battery issues fixed and everything, this had some water damage in it, uh, you've got this light which is always on. And did some research on that, and that might actually be a firmware bug. I'm not sure. Um, some people were saying, oh, it could be the power switch and stuff, but um, I opened this up, did some uh, continuity checks, some resistance checks, and actually this power switch does exactly what it's supposed to be doing. Uh, when I flip it, Battery, 90%. you get the green light, it talks to you, it turns on. So it knows it's turning off, it knows it's turning on, and it knows it's not in pairing mode. And yet this light stays on, which leads me to believe either, either the water damage did something really funky or there's a firmware issue that is in the code that I just can't fix. Um, I did go ahead and firmware update this and the problem persists. I tried to do a factory reset and that didn't, that is like almost impossible to do. It has to do with like uh, timing of plugging and unplugging the power port. It's really silly and I tried it a few times, couldn't get, couldn't get to do a factory reset. Um, so I'm gonna try something a little more creative. And that is creating my using my own circuit here, which I'm going to put in this side of the headphone piece to power on and off the headphones using a touch sensor. And I have a feeling that this should do the job pretty well. I'm using the TTP223 microcontroller, uh, yeah, microcontroller uh, IC. It's really just a standalone IC. So it's in a SOT23 six pin package. 
And if, as you can see here, I'm going to touch this wire. Let's go ahead and turn off the lights, actually. Make things a little more visible. And when I touch this wire, you'll see that green light comes on and that one goes off. Touch it again and it swaps back. Yay, the fanciness of touch sensors. What this is doing is that green LED is just the output signal from the TTP223 directly. However, this is feeding into a more powerful end channel FET, which can drive higher loads like the Bluetooth headset, which then shows that it's being driven on and off. So the idea is that the TTP223 is going to be your standby circuit, and that'll get plugged into the power wires over here coming from the battery. So that will be constantly on, but only after someone touches it. I'll make maybe a touch bar up here, uh, something, something simple. Only when somebody touches it will it actually run power through the rest of the circuit and thus then turning off that light, which is now constantly on. Should be kind of a neat fix. We'll see if I can cram everything in here and do so ever so carefully without shorting anything out. More to come. All right, folks, Sega Sonic fan back. And I've got the circuit all installed. I need to glue everything in place and get the touch sensor. But I just wanted to show that it's actually working. I'm adjusting the volume on the phone. So check this out with this circuit in here, what happens. Um, and I could, you know, disconnect power from the switch over there, or I could do it from my new capacitive touch. There you go, power off. Power off. All I'm doing is touching this wire. Completely hard shut off. If you can hear that, it says battery 90%. And then the music will start playing. So it totally works. And I'm using a 2N7002 N channel MOSFET, which is peaked at 270 milliamps. Was a little bit worried that current might not be enough, but I'm maxing out the volume playing music on it. Seems to be working great. So I'm gonna go ahead and secure everything in place. Uh, find a way to sort of poke a hole for the wire to come out, maybe uh, do a little uh, touch sensor area so that uh, the person this is going to, I can just be like, yeah, touch that one area and you'll be able to shut this off. But I'm gonna count this as a success. Uh, these circuits are my own design, but I'm uh, planning on very likely open sourcing them. Uh, leave a comment, let me know if you'd like the, the motherboards open sourced so you can make your own circuit like this. It took me an evening, you know, a couple hours, hour and a half, maybe something like that. It wasn't too bad at all. And uh, as you can see, it's, uh, I think it's going to really help keep this Bose from uh, slow draining its own battery through the firmware bug. And we'll keep that light off, which is really nice. And I guess I'll just show that really quick. So you can see here it's powered on. And as soon as I touch it, that light goes off. So I'm going to go ahead and switch this to the off position. Touch here, and you see that light's always on. That's that's the bug. And so, turn it on, and again, hard shut off. So this should really help the sleeping current of the TTP uh, 223 is something ridiculously small. So I think we're gonna be good for saving the battery on this. Uh, it won't need to be charged, you know, every day and can be charged, you know, as usual, whatever, you know, every month or three months or whatever it is that uh, modern electronics need to be charged at. Should be good. I'll make one more follow-up clip, I think, showing everything I'll put back together, but I'm quite happy with this. Okay, so here I am with my Bose uh, QC35 repair hack thing for this white light problem, this white light that stays on and drains the battery until it goes kaput. Um, I created a little cutoff circuit that I built into the side of the headphone over here using a touch capacitive circuit and a P-channel MOSFET. I had to use a P-channel because the temperature uh, detection wire is actually also tied to the end channel. So it doesn't totally isolate the circuit if you use an N-channel MOSFET. So used a P-channel MOSFET and the idea is really quite simple. Um, when it's all the way off, it's actually not turning all the way off, which is the problem. It's not the switch. It's, the switch is totally fine. It's something else to do in the firmware. What, who knows what? Um, and so rather than trying to troubleshoot that for days, I created this little simple circuit. You touch it, 
white light goes off. Touch it again, white light comes back on. That's all there is to it. And it's nice and hidden under the arch of this plastic here, so you can't, it's really hard to sort of accidentally touch, which I think is gonna work out quite well. And uh, the uh, it's insulated there with a little bit of black hot glue, um, which will keep any contaminants or anything from getting into the headset. And yeah, it's working great. So now I go ahead and just do the regular power on thing. Tells me that it's connected to my phone and go ahead and play a song here. Works great. And then I can power it off, but then to fully power it off, I touch this, put it in like the sort of a deep sleep state. Now, if I need to charge it, I do want that actually back on. And then I can just plug in a charging cable and it will charge like regular because this, this switch actually is a complete shutoff of the battery, it disconnects it completely entirely from the system. And so that's why you have to react, reactivate it to charge it. But battery is almost completely full. Don't need to charge it right now. And uh, yeah, this is just like kind of a nice fun little hack that fixes a very annoying problem. And I actually uh, set this aside overnight and after uh, with it, being completely shut off like this the next day, 100% battery. So it's totally working, totally saving the battery because the deep sleep of the capacitive touch circuit is like the most insanely low current draw. It's like one microamp or something. So you can have these like this for months probably. Battery will be fine. Hopefully this is useful to somebody. If you're interested in the circuits that I designed to go in here, let me know. I might open source those later. I've got a lot on my to-do list. But I do have a new open source section on my website that you can check out in the link below. It's also in my banner. It's pretty hard to not find my website link. <laughs> it's kind of everywhere. Um, and I've got some open source 3D print models and other things too. Have fun hacking and repairing, folks. This is Sega Sonic Fan, signing out.